thank you to you both. Uh, my name's Ian uh, and Maria, do you wanna go ahead and introduce yourself? Okay, so hello everyone. My name is Maria Fernandez. I'm a high school senior and I live in Spain. And I started participating in MUN like two years ago. And it completely changed my life because first of all, I wanted to study engineering like my father. I was really focused on that. And then like one month ago, I changed my mind completely. And now I want to study international affairs with business administration. So yeah, we could say that MUN Impact and MUN uh, have had a great impact on me. And uh, well, basically in this new project of MUN Alumni Network, uh, I am going to be the high student lead. So what I'm going to do is connect uh, the former MUNers and the later ones who are doing right now the experience of the ones that are already in university or working. And um, yeah, that's me. Awesome. Thank you, Maria. Um, I guess I forgot to say, you know, who I am. I'm Ian. Um, I am uh, kind of the person who helps out uh, Lisa with uh, the alumni network, uh, acting as kind of uh, chief aide, if you will, uh, outside of MUN Impact. Uh, I'm a final year university student in the United States, uh, in Virginia. Um, and once I graduate, I'll be entering government affairs. Uh, Catherine, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Nope, that's okay. Uh, Zainab, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Hey, um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, perfect. Hi guys, I'm Zainab and um, one second. Okay, um, I'm an HR specialist here in Qatar. Um, I'm also studying CIPD level seven. Um, in university, I studied psychology with HR and um, I started MUN about six or seven years ago in high school and it completely changed my life. Like um, I was afraid of speaking publicly and I started my public speaking through MUN. So it really, really helped me. Um, it helped me learn and develop a lot of skills like networking, for example. And uh, with MUN Alumni Network, I am the outreach coordinator and the HR manager. So. Thank you so much. And Nina? Thank you, Ian. Hi everyone, my name is Nina Wamboi. I'm a young professional from Nairobi, Kenya, East, Eastern Africa, from East Africa. I am an in MUN, I'm honored and excited to be part of MUN Alumni Network. I am the East Africa lead. MUN for me, I was part of the MU, MUN in Kenya. That's the Kenya Model United Nations. Uh, while, in, while at university. And it's there that I got to meet a community of fellow like fellow minded people. I was able to be part of great debates. My worldview was expanded outside of my own locality. And MUN Alumni Network for me is an opportunity for me to reconnect with old friends, meet new friends. Uh, and most importantly, it's an opportunity for us all to harness our professional potential a professional network in order to have an impact as youth. Thank you. Thank you, Nina. All right, so the title of this presentation is Building an MUN Alumni Network to Advance the SDGs. Uh, now that hinges chiefly on, oh boy, now I, hmm, there we go, aha. Uh, SDG target 4.7, uh, which reads as follows. Uh, by 2030, ensure that all learners acquire the knowledge and skills needed to promote sustainable development, including, among others, uh, through education for sustainable development and sustainable lifestyles, human rights, gender equality, promotion of a culture of peace and nonviolence, global citizenship, and appreciation of cultural diversity and of culture's contribution to sustainable development. Um, now, in, in chatting with Lisa, who heads up MUN Impact, uh, all of us 
um, noted that this was incredibly important uh, to the entire goal of MUM, right? It, it, where we're not simply doing this as an entertainment exercise or even as a learning exercise, but instead to cultivate these certain types of ideals among students and learners so that they can go forth after they leave MUN, as you know, I think a couple of us who are speaking today have, right? And can promote these ideas among a future generation of learners. Um, in that way, we created what we call the MUN Impact Alumni Network Survey. Um, the survey, which we'll drop uh, in the chat. Um, actually, could one of you go ahead and, and do that now? There'll be a link at the end uh, for everybody on YouTube. Um, is a survey that asks folks who have spent time doing MUN or have spent time around MUN how uh, they have seen MUN impact their lives. Uh, and we'll get to a little of that in a second. Um, but we wanted to ask just a couple of questions uh, pertaining to the survey and to target 4.7. Uh, so now I think Maria, Zainab, and Nina, how about we open up some questions for you? What is the MUN Impact Alumni Network Survey? Uh, so I will I will go first. Uh, so for me, this survey, I think it's a new opportunity to connect students and, and, and other people who are outside the education system, who are not studying in university. Uh, it's a way to connect them and a way to show the world how MUN can change your life in a pretty, you know, amazing way. And yeah, I think that it's basically a new opportunity in order to learn how this activity can change you. That's, you know, a really great observation and kind of understanding that MUN is this kind of transformational activity that I think all of us have um, spent significant amounts of time with and have really, as I think we were all saying, really changed the trajectory of, of, of not only our careers, right, but as, as who we are as people and how we view our impact on the world. Um, anybody else wanna talk about what, what the survey means to them or, or why it's so important that we do it as kind of uh, this broad open source activity? It's also another way of like connecting uh, the alumni of um, MUN, people who have uh, previously been a part of MUN, you connect them and it's, they come together as a platform once again. That's a great point. I think that's something actually we're gonna get to in a, uh, in a future question is, is why is this network so important and what unique selling point does it have over possibly other forms of kind of uh, network connectors. Now, drawing this back to the, the target 4.7, which is uh, the sustainable development uh, and, and promoting the acquisition of knowledge. Um, one of the things that target 4.7 doesn't say is that it's only for youth or only for folks who are below the age of 18 or university, right? Or, you know, graduate level. Um, as, as for folks who are maybe a little bit, you know, older than uh, most of the people at today's conference. Um, how has your learning journey continued beyond school, either within or without MUN? Can I go? Yeah, of course. Okay. So, um, to be very honest, like in school, I took global citizenship as a subject. And also in university, we had sustainability at, throughout uh, all my courses. So that I feel has helped me with getting to where I am today, with uh, having a more sustainable lifestyle. So I personally feel like if this is uh, incorporated in schools um, with students at a very young age, they might be able to um, adapt the lifestyle as they grow older. So adults could be educated about this maybe through marketing platforms or even MUN Impact uh, alumni survey. That's great. Uh, Maria or Nina? 
well, I'm still in high school, so I don't know if I could say much about how it has impacted me through my learning you know, process because I'm still finishing school and that. But I could say that um, before I started MUN, I was really, really ignorant about all the problems that our planet faces. So I could say that with this program, I have learned a lot and I have learned some ways in which I could tackle the issues our, our, our world faces, like in, a, in, a, in an easy way for students like me who are still in high school. That's awesome. Ian, can I go on? Yeah, of course, absolutely. Oh, yes, thank you. Yes, uh, so um, I recently graduated in December. And uh, one thing that I've realized is MUN helped me ex explore the opportunities that are there. My worldview was opened up. The symbolizing or ad acting as uh, an ambassador to a state and having to research and the policies and try to figure out how it adapt, how to align my conversation or my contribution to the agenda at hand, really let me know that it's not about just, you know, finish school, get a, get a good job, and then uh, be effective and whatnot and just be part of the system, but how you can actually contribute change to the system. And so, Aligning this to target 4.7, um, it's knowledge. MUN made me know that you, it's not only about what's happening in Nairobi, which is the city I'm in and I was raised in, but also what's happening in um, Spain, in the States, in Sierra Leone, across the globe, that there's that community that's bigger than me and that, that's bigger than what I am. So in a way also helps me be in, um, how, how do I put it? Learn to appreciate other cultures, learn to appreciate the difference in opinions. The, I mean, elements that were outside of the school curriculum, such as liberals and whatnot. You know, it's, I've, I've come to realize, or rather for me, my experience with our curriculum in, uni, in school, uh, in the system, I was in the 844 system, and you find that there's a way it's not as global. I, uh, for example, Zainab mentioned that she had global studies. I, and, and that's something I came to learn in universities because I wasn't even part of MUN in high school. So MUN Alumni Network bringing it into this is it's an opportunity for you to see that it's past it being a club, which it was at my university, that there's a way that this could be a lifestyle. Can it? Can we say a lifestyle, or is that pushing it too far? But it could be um, a, a community or part of that works or applies to you not only while you're doing extracurricular activities in universities or in high school or a really or a cool club that you possibly enjoy being part of, but it could also be how it can feed into your life, into your purpose. Thank you. No, no, that's awesome. I, I like I like the lifestyle part. I think definitely um, MUN keeps intersecting with my life in ways that I don't expect. You know, I was talking to somebody the other day about how I was doing this great presentation. And he said, oh, you know, I actually did MUN all the way up until college. And I would have never known. And I think that really speaks to how important it is that we have a survey to connect folks, right? And kind of keep spreading uh, this sustainable development culture, this kind of way of, of fostering communication between different groups uh, towards a more sustainable, uh, more well-informed populace. Um, you know, kind of swinging into that, have you, um, had the opportunity to speak with folks in advance this sustainable development message at all. Um, I know something that I guess I can start off here. Um, two of my brothers are actually in this conference today and I was just corresponding with their uh, MUN sponsors via email on Friday asking them, hey, you know, would you come to my university uh, and bring your students uh, to come to our conferences? Uh, because I think it's very important that as somebody who's from the American Midwest, which is very different than the American East Coast, we kind of get this cross-country discussion 
because those are two very different types of people, yet we want to connect them through this common thread of MUN. Uh, the last question I have on the target 4.7 before we move on to some more nitty gritty survey stuff. Um, how do you see MUN as a whole advancing target 4.7? Uh, one of the things I know Lisa has discussed with us is she she is really, really excited for folks at the actual United Nations to kind of get a hold of the stuff that we're doing right now. You know, how how many people are at this global summit? How many people across the world are impacted? I think at the last check, we had 101 different countries at the last global summit, which is truly incredible. I mean, incredibly amazing. I mean, on the panel, there are four different people from four different countries. And I can't think of another way that we would connect folks from that broadly across. So how do you see MUN advancing this global sustainable development conversation? Do you think it, it, it extends beyond our, our conferences and Zoom discussions? And any of you can, can jump in here. You don't, you can just unmute yourself. I think it is both um, being able to kind of advance that better understanding of a worldview. Um, so even stepping into the role of someone else, um, which is just such a useful skill to have in life, that you can put yourself in someone else's shoes and better understand where they're coming from. Um, I think that's absolutely relevant and necessary and is part of that being able to other, understand and connect with other people. But as someone who was able to both compete and manage conferences that had um, international attendance. And like you said, Ian, um, even from different parts of the US, it's not even just people whose own viewpoints are different. Everyone is learning differently. Everyone is communicating differently and everyone is having their own approach to problem solving, to communicating and to bridging gaps. So being able to walk into a room and being able to find out ways to connect with people and understand where they're coming from and how you can work together, even with different kind of processes to a final goal um, and be able to find that common ground and that ultimate solution, I think is something that is so sort of relevant continuing on and also you know, creating that model UN alumni network, um, being able to have these people that are all over the world and that I even reach out to something happens in the UK and I reach out to my friend who went to the University of Manchester and I'm able to learn more about what's going on there from someone who's part of it or something that happens in Lebanon and I can reach out and say, tell me about Beirut, what's going on. Um, I think that's just something that you can't really get in a lot of other activities and arenas. That's a great point. You know, I was just in the U UK for, for university for the past two years and one of my flatmates uh, led up our model UN program and hosted St. Mon at the University of St. Andrews, as well as uh, went to you know Manchester and to Oxford and and London a couple of times, um, and even places you know like Spain or or Ireland before uh, COVID. And it was really really great to see how they did Mon very differently from how we do American Mon, from even how we do American Mon in high school or for my folks who go to you know places like the University of Chicago, they do it very differently than perhaps, you know, uh, Georgetown or, uh, you know, Boston, right? These are, it's, it's really interesting how by bringing these people together, right, uh, we're fostering this common conversation that then gets dispersed back across and then gets cultivated in their own locations. And so, as you're continually recombining and separating and recombining and separating and building these lasting connections, uh, which is kind of something that's important as we get to the uh, alumni network part of this conversation, um, really you know, developing this, this MUN thread. Um, uh, now we have some questions uh, about, you know, what is the survey and, and what is the practical implications of the survey and why did we decide to make the survey? Um, so we've discussed a little bit about how 
previously. I think I remember from my early days of MUN before we had Zoom and before we had, you know, all of these really great ways to connect with people. Um, the only way I knew people from MUN was I showed up to a conference and I sat down and uh, had lunch with them and that was it. And, um, you know, we didn't have we didn't have cheap international texting like WhatsApp. Um, we kind of just were at the, we were at the whims of of the conferences. Um, so how have you all connected uh, with other MUN alumni? And then what do you wish was better? Um, which will lead into a next question about how did we address that problem? And then if you can hop in, yeah. So um, over here in Qatar, we had Thaimun and Georgetown MUN. I think we still do. Um, and at the time it was Facebook. So everyone sitting around me, we were just on each other's Facebook and that's how we connected. And also Snapchat, like a tiny little bit, but I'm not sure how they connect now. <laughs> well, can we still so, talk? Can I go? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so right now, as I'm still in high school, you know, uh, we, all, we connect mostly with Instagram and with WhatsApp. We, in, in every conference in the committee that you are working, uh, we usually have a WhatsApp, a WhatsApp group about, uh, of the committee. So I have one of the Royal Russell Conference that was DICEC, and one of the SDGs special conference, uh, which was in MU in Bilbao. So yeah, we have like lots of WhatsApp groups. And then we also chat with each other on Instagram. So yeah, that's how we connect today. That's great, Nina. Okay, thank you. Yes, uh, so while at university, we did used to have WhatsApp groups as well. We have in Kenya, we have Kenya Model United Nations, uh, Afro MUN, I'm just referring to the ones in university, uh, the ones I interacted with. I'm sure there's middle school MUN and others. And we also have Simon. Now, after university, you find that unless you are friends with the people you interacted with, kind of like what Ian said, you were meeting up during lunch or in between the sessions. And you find that after you graduate, uh, so there's no MUN alumni, for example, in Kenya Model United Nations, or if it is, you're told it's a friends, it's something on Facebook where you are a friend of um, KMUN. But then now after you, the thing is for me actually why I'm really passionate about all this is because I had to actively seek out pe uh, people I'd interacted with during the session. I was active to ask them, yes, hi, how are you? What are you doing? And you find that many of them are in those professional spaces that as a young professional I'm seeking access to, but I don't know that, a, a, um, let me say person X, I don't know that person X who I was friends with during conference and I was in, I'll sit next to during conference is actually in this room or, or in these spaces. So you struggle and especially as a young person, you're trying to build your networks while you actually do have a network. It's just that you haven't, um, how do you say it? You haven't strengthened it. So you, so it's important for MU and alumni, I guess, then allows us, especially globally, live alone just locally in Kenya. It allows all of us to actively stay engaged after conference, after graduation, and ask, seek, seek, uh, I don't know, share information. What is it that you're up to? Do you need our support in, in uh, whatever you are doing? Just so that as I keep on referring to youth. I know Target 4.7 does not specifically mention the youth, but I am passionate as a young professional that we need each other's support. There's so much negative competition that seems to strive among us. And you find that MUN was a neutral space, was a place where we were all seeking um, to have a good time, to have these great debates, to be someone else for that particular day and really uh, represent what you believe the real actual um, person would have done in honor of their country. So this is, this is great. And uh, MUN just allows people to open up their minds and realize that it's not just what you're being told all the time in the news, what your teachers are saying, but now you have a chance to actually seek this knowledge for yourself. Thank you. 
No, I love that. That's, and I think that 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 brings us to the next half of the question, which is, what do you wish was better? I'll tell you, I have the same problem. I am Facebook friends with some folks that I was uh, at uh, Thyman Q in like 2016 with. That was a great conference, had a total blast, but they're now just Facebook friends, right? I, I see them and I go, oh, I forgot that we're, you know, we're connected in this way. And so I might send them a Facebook message, but it's obviously gets a little bit awkward having been, you know, two or three years removed from last speaking to them. And, you know, as I've kind of worked my way through university and seen people graduate, it's interesting the paths that people take, right? And it's, it's always good at, from a personal perspective to have this nice, nice network, but it's also good to just keep up with people in a friendly way. And Facebook, for all of its benefits, isn't the best facilitator of that, right? You have Facebook friends who are your MUN friends and your university friends and your high school friends and your cousins and your distant relatives and that, that dog page you follow because the dogs are so adorable. But it's hard, it's all together. <laughs> I, see, I see Catherine raising her hand, you know, guilty as charged, I would agree. Um, but no, it's very, very difficult. And I often feel like that I need a way to segment that a little bit better. In the same way, LinkedIn is the epitome of professional connections, but those are just that, professional connections, right? They're, they're your favorite coworker, as well as your boss from three pay grades up, the person you met once at that conference, right? Not MUN conference. This is like professional conference, you know, where things are very, very dry, right? And so again, it's hard to make those connections and it's hard to stay in touch. Um, do you all, have you had similar observations with this kind of um, no perfect fit for how you connect with your, your MUN friends? So I'll actually start with a kind of small world funny story, but then um, go from there. So I had the opportunity to work with uh, Mun Cafe and Worldview Education in Hyderabad uh, in India. And I had gone there and was still getting to know the city um, a couple weeks in and went to a restaurant and actually ran into a former colleague and competitor from the University of Chicago, Model United Nations um, at that restaurant randomly in Hyderabad. So um, definitely there is a small world with Mun sometimes, but I think more so it has to be very intentional. I, I mean, it's like all kind of adult relationships. You know, you reach a certain point where between life and career and everything else going on and all of the passions that you have, um, you have to broker you know, your time really um, wisely. And then on top of that, you have to kind of think through the kinds of people you want to connect with. So whether that's when I go to a certain city and I know that I have some alumni contacts there, then I try to make sure that I reach out to them and you have that effort put into making that connection to see them. Um, or I have some different pockets of you know, Facebook groups from former conferences or groups of friends that were close throughout our model United Nations competitive years and will try and you know, maybe once every one or two years schedule a meetup somewhere so that we can be intentional. But that's the thing. There's Facebook, so you can have um, you know, a quick interaction or Snapchat. I can see my world map that fills out a lot um, after all of the things I've done with Mun. But ultimately, you have to be the one who is on top of making sure those connections stay. Like in my Model UN club at Emory University, um, I was very privileged that we had a lot of linkages. So kind of bigs and littles and um, mentors and mentees and making sure that there was such a strong connection within the club that you constantly had this chain, this family that was there for you both for Model United Nations, for learning skills and understanding how to acquire the knowledge and build off of it, um, but also be there as a support system for you. But in the post-collegiate or post-structured um, education world, it's definitely a much different ballgame in terms of staying connected. No, that's a great point. You know, uh, I'll, I'll briefly connect this before I open this back up with that Muntor Munti College 
thing is I'm currently in Washington, D.C., which is not where my university is. I'm taking a semester off. Um, but I'm meeting twice this coming week with uh, either mentors who are older than me or friends who are older than me that I met through MUN. And you're totally right. It's a different ball game, right? I had to search out for their cell phone number and then text them, which is very, very different than this Facebook group Snapchat world. Because at a certain point, when MUN doesn't end, but instead, you know, moves to a back burner, right, the methods of communication change. And the more narrow that you have these communication channels, right, if it's explicitly about work, or about MUN, right, or perhaps it's about, you know, uh, your favorite sporting team, right, those are going to stay a little bit easier than this mass of a Facebook or a LinkedIn. Um, looks like we have about three minutes before we uh, open up the, uh, the floor for questions. So anybody who's in the chat, uh, we'll start taking questions in three minutes uh, at, at 1210 Eastern Standard Time. Uh, do any of you have any last closing thoughts? Nope, that's okay. So then where can folks find the survey? Well, it's actually right here at this nice little tiny URL. Uh, so it's tinyurl.com slash MUN alumni. Uh, that link should stay up uh, for a while, but if, if for some reason it goes down uh, for all the folks on YouTube, you can just go to the MUN alumni uh, website where it's linked very, very nicely on the page right at the bottom. I think there's a big, a big box that says, are you an MUN alumni? Please join our alumni network. Um, and that'll take you to a type form survey, uh, which will ask you for some basic information and about uh, how we can contact you, uh, how you'd prefer to be contacted, and uh, maybe a little bit about a story that you had so that we can share that with other folks and spread how great MUN is um, with potential uh, new joiners. Um, so at this point, I think I'm going to um, try to leave this up. Um, can one, of, I can't find the chat because I'm terrible at Zoom. Could one of you uh, figure out, oh, it popped up, ah, there we go. Um, let's see, um, is there any questions? I'm, look, I'm reading through the comments. Um, um, guys, what if if I can screen share right now, let me screen share the actual website um, so that people can actually see um, see a little oh, yeah, bit about perfect. what we're doing. Uh, let me then stop my sharing. OK. Yeah, so uh, as you can see, this is uh, this is the website. The first page of this uh, is focused on delegates and testimonials. Um, but I think uh, the second important part of the discussion is actually, you know, what's the vision? If you can connect an alumni network, what do we ask them to do? It's one thing to just be united and talk and have conversations. But the question then really is, what does this network do? Um, and I think this is a really important part of, you know, what we're attempting to do. So there are literally millions and millions of MUN alumni all over the world. And so there are things that if we band together that we're able to do as a group. So for example, we could promote MUN and SDG education. We could be champions of gender equality and find ways to support MUN organizations and alumni who are doing that. Uh, there's a real need for basic educational materials. This is not like underwriting big expensive trips to conferences, but rather how can we get printed material into the hands of MUN clubs or maybe a laptop and a Wi-Fi card so they can do research. So really, really basic things that I think, um, again, tie in to the promotion of SDG4, which is just, you know, basic education. Um, 
and then how do we find ways to work together to develop MUN in different languages and to do so in a way and push it out to places that have never had the opportunity to do MUN before. So underlining all of this, and this was mentioned early on in the discussion, is how can we then, um, you know, develop a network that then we can highlight and show the UN that we're there to support their efforts. One thing that has come up in a lot of conversations, you know, over uh, all of these presentations is, oh, we just want to partner with the UN. And really, no one partners with the UN. That doesn't really happen. Um, when you partner with the UN, it's basically you're partnering with 193 member states. And so, that's not an efficient way to kind of work to support the UN. What you need to do is design your programs that align with exactly what the UN is doing and then just kind of highlight yourself and say, hey, we're here to support the work that you do. And I am just convinced with the millions of alumni that are out there, this is something that with some organization and a little bit of focus and a call to action, this should be something that should be quite easy for us to do. So let's you know continue having the conversation about how we're connecting but ultimately once we're connecting what are we going to do as uh, as a community and that's where i think the power is going to really lie in um, in developing an alumni network so the links have been dropped in the chat the survey is there uh, the website is there so that's what i would ask you uh, to check out and again you know if you go back the survey is really simple. It should probably, unless you want to upload pictures of your MUN experience, the whole thing probably will take about three minutes to fill out. So I guess what I'm asking all of you is to please, please, please uh, share this link. Um, if people don't want to fill it out, they don't want to fill it out. But you know what? There's like millions of us. So um, this is, you know, basically we want to empower you and get get this into the hands of all of you so you can go out and promote this. So that said, I will stop my screen share and uh, I appreciate the opportunity of our MUN alumni leaders uh, here to kind of talk through the importance of this and then, uh, you know, figure out what our next steps are going to be. Thank you very much, Ian, also for uh, organizing this group and bringing everyone together. It is not easy to do this with our time zones and differences, and I'm very appreciative of your efforts. Well, thank you, Lisa. You know, Lisa, I think, was the was the catalyst for bringing us all together. Lisa had reached out to me uh, very graciously about a couple of months ago uh, via email, and um, I think we had the shared vision of, of what the Alumni Network could be and the steps that it would take to get there. Uh, and so it's really, I think, uh, I speak for everybody here, it's a really big honor to, to be a part of something that's spreading something as great as MUN um, around the world and to folks who, who maybe uh, love MUN but don't know how to get connected to it, right? Um, yeah, I, I personally think this is one of the single greatest things that an alumni network could, could do. Um, we've seen this particularly with the pandemic, but even before, um, we take it for granted in a lot of our educational backgrounds that we have clubs or we have teachers that provide these opportunities. And there are just simply, I would say probably the majority of, of school environments in the world do not have that kind of rich extracurricular, um, you know, kind of opportunity for students. And so what I've seen through MUN Impact is that when you provide this opportunity, it's like throwing a drop of water onto a sponge. It disappears and is absorbed immediately. So for all of us, because MUN is so diverse, there's so many different ways we can approach that. Imagine a network who simply could lay out several different opportunities for engagement. And imagine what that means to students, but also importantly to teachers, because good teachers often with zero resources, as our partners in Nigeria have pointed out, um, this is a tool. This is something that they really now can take and share with the rest of the world. So uh, we're not talking large amounts of money here, but we are talking about organization and vision. So that's free if people are willing to roll up their sleeves and uh, and jump into that. So 
with that, I guess that's where our starting point is. And uh, happy to have so many fellow travelers in this journey here on this call. We hugely appreciate it. Um, I think there's, I, I see one comment from Alejandra from Spain uh, saying you need to get the contact details of MUN students as they leave school. That is such an awesome point. And I think that's one of the things that we really hope to address uh, with the survey. And Alejandra, if you, uh, Nicola, uh, looks like that's your name. Uh, Nicola, that's one of the things that we're doing with the survey. Um, I think that we, um, we wanted to make it so it's very, very easy through that simple link, right? I mean, that's all it takes is just one share, whether it be Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn or whatnot, right? And then it's out on the internet and people can take it at their leisure. Uh, one of the, the great parts is, is when you are ready to come and join us on the alumni network, we are happy to have you. And it just is sitting there for you to, you know, take whenever it's available for you, right? At that point, then we can start and get you incorporated into this great group that we have um, and really recognize not only how we can support you on your path going forward, but also uh, supporting the future generation of MUN students on their journey, whatever that, whether that means uh, through monetary donations or speaking events or mentorship programs. Uh, that's sort of the, the great part of the alumni network is that it's not only scalable, Right, but it's also adaptable. Right, I, and I and I do think this, uh, and this is kind of why Maria, uh, as a high school student, is on this committee because I do think there's a lot of value in trying to capture, you know, students in their last year of high school and getting them signed up before they leave. Right, because like if we don't capture them and they stop doing MUN we've kind of lost them. So I would plant the seed that, you know, this, this MUN season is horribly disrupted, but people are, are, they're desperately trying to find a way to kind of keep MUN alive during the pandemic. So, you know, the question I throw out to everyone is, well, how do we find these MUN communities right now? And then how do we, um, in, you know, how, how can we, you know, package this link and the website in social media and just push it out there so that people can start picking it up. I think um, that's super, super important. Um, the other thing is, and I see, you know, we have uh, Mateo and Alejandro, for example, um, and we're beginning, we have uh, partners in Quito that we're working very, very closely with and in MUN, MUN Impact Latin America. Uh, that's now emerging. So I think we should have this form, we should translate it into Spanish. There's probably a couple languages we need to translate it into. And I think we need to get that translated and have a Spanish version in order to tap into um, non-English speaking MUN communities. So these are all things that we can do. It's just going to require the volunteers to step forward and help us push that forward. So um, consider this an SOS plea for help. Um, I, right now it's just critical we get the link out. We just need to, to let people know that uh, that is out there and available. So I'm going to drop my email also here in the chat in case anyone wants to reach out to us and then I will promptly just forward their email probably to Ian or, uh, or Catherine. And can I also just say, you know, we're about two and a half hours away from being done with Global Summit 2.0. Um, it, this has been a heavy lift. There have been some technology things that, that we've done this time that have been very time consuming. Um, and so for those of you on the call, I apologize for going dark and I have truly gone dark on uh, and with a number of you on many things. So give me a couple of days to just kind of refocus a little bit, but we do need to jump back in. I have emails that need to be created and all that. So apologies for uh, letting a few things slide by the wayside, but anyway, it is what it is. You've all been involved in MUN and you know how that goes. So, all right, I'm going to stop talking guys. I'm going to drop my email here. I'm going to go a little bit dark because I need to check in on a few things, but thank you for being here. This, uh, this uh, will be on YouTube later. Um, so we'll get that out there and looking forward to future conversations and we do need to ramp it up. We need to we need to kick start it here. So thank you, everyone.
And, you know, I think that's probably as good of a way as we can uh, end the conversation as possible. Um, unless, does anybody else on the panel have anything else to say? I mean, I think Lisa did a great job of encapsulating everything uh, that we wanted to say and to kind of sum things up at the end, which was a good call to action, a, a nice link drop, and a way to contact us through that email, lmartin at munimpact.org. Um, anything else from any folks? All right, uh, seeing none. I will love, oh, oh, go ahead. Um, I would love to say that it was a great session uh, and I had great pleasure listening to all the details and all the information that you talked about. Um, also, I agree with Ms. Martin about the non-English speaking countries. Uh, since I come from a French school back background, I learned French at school, even though I'm not in France. So about this reaching out to new people, it's really, uh, how to say, it's really inspiring and something that we should uh, focus on. So it was a great session. Uh, so I want to thank you. Well, well, thank you. You know, uh, we love kind of sharing how great the, the, the alumni network is. And we love getting great feedback about, you know, things like uh, translating the website into a broader number of languages. Uh, that's definitely something that we hope to do as we scale up. And I know Lisa and I have had multiple conversations in the past month about uh, getting the resources uh, and the, the time uh, together uh, to do that. Um, admin team, I think we'll hand it back over to you. Thank you for being so helpful and for walking me through uh, this whole Zoom thing because I am uh, generally incompetent at technology. No problem. It was a great pleasure. Thank you for the session again. There we go. I'll, uh, I'll leave you with a few images of uh, some of the work that our schools are doing um, in northern Nigeria. These were kids that were starting um, an MUN club. I'm going to dangerously, I don't think I can share. Nah, it's not going to work. I don't have those queued up. Um, anyway, let's be in touch. Yeah, Mateo, hope your session went well. Nice to see a real person instead of just a picture. That's really cool. And uh, yeah, um, it, if you if you sign up and do the survey, we'll collect your email address. And there's a place on the survey you can say, "Hey, I'd like to be I'd like to be involved." And then we'll contact you and we'll loop you into these conversations so that you can uh, uh, continue with this. Oh, one last thought. I mentioned this to someone in the UN Partnerships Office. I think another important role for um, an alumni work, uh, an alumni network is actual advocacy for the United Nations itself. The UN is under tremendous pressure. They are carrying way too much water in a very hostile environment with the pandemic, you know, um, progress towards the goals are themselves being eroded um, given the, the nature of what we're living through. And there really needs to be strong, strong advocacy of the United Nations. In some countries like the United States, that is hugely unpopular at the moment. I mean, people are concerned. They're, they're cautious about how they time their interaction even with the UN because they don't, because of just even domestic politics. So um, I'll, I'll leave one little story with you. Um, we have a, a friend in the partnerships office and uh, his office is across the street from the main UN compound and his job is you know to hold meetings and then they'll walk across the street they'll go through the security um, system and into the UN building itself and he said the number of times that he'll be with you know a businessman or businesswoman in their 40s or 50s walking up to the UN and they'll stop and they'll think wow I haven't felt like this I haven't really thought about the UN like this since my MUN days right there are a lot of lovers of the organization and we have to find them. That's our mission. Okay. 
with that, let's close the room. We've got one more session and then social hour, and then I'm going to go crawl under a big blanket. Okay, thank you everyone. Goodbye. <laughs>